Hey everyone, Lee Roy here with the latest edition of the Coppers 412. Four things I want you to know, two things to look forward to, one thing to think about. Starting with the four things I'd like you to know. First, I'm happy to welcome Kevin Washington to the Coppers team as our new VP of External Affairs. Kevin will report directly to me and have oversight of the company's newly established government relations function, along with our communications and community relations functions. So why this function and why now? Well, we actually had planned to add a scaled down version of this role in 2020 that would have focused more on the community side of the equation and had actually begun the recruiting process when the pandemic hit. Now, along with all other hiring at that point, we had decided to press pause, put it on the shelf and reassess it at a future date. And what's gone on in the past few years has only reinforced my belief that we'd be well served to have someone coordinating our efforts with elected officials and community influencers on a full-time basis as opposed to relying heavily upon consultants or others in the organization on just a piecemeal basis. And not only that, but I wanted the individual's experience to be heavier on the government relations side, given the amount of interface we have with various regulatory bodies. I mean, let's face it, we operate in an industry that's often misunderstood, and we need to ensure that policymakers and community leaders are educated on the facts about our business so that they can better advocate on our behalf to ensure that coppers lives on to protect what matters and preserve the future. And Kevin's just the person to lead those efforts. He has extensive experience in legislative and regulatory public policy and has built a function very much like this at his previous employer. So I'm confident he fills in an important missing piece to our leadership team as we continue to navigate through an increasingly complex business environment. Now Kevin will have our stellar communications team of Jessica Franklin and Julia Millman reporting to him. And he'll be based out of Washington, D.C. while also having an office in the Coppers Building in Pittsburgh, and he'll travel extensively also to fulfill his duties. I want you to please join me in welcoming Kevin to Coppers. The second thing I'd like you to know is I'm back on the road again, is this past week I was happy to visit our team in Ashcroft, British Columbia. Our Ashcroft facility is a cross-tie treating facility that primarily serves the Canadian Pacific Railroad and is approximately 55 miles west of Kamloops. It's an absolutely beautiful part of Canada, and I just happened to have a gorgeous weather day when I was there. Now, whether dealing with deadly wildfires as they have over the last several years or flooding from the Thompson River, which they sit right above, the challenges our team faces regularly at Ashcroft are all too frequent and can be deadly. I did get to meet our plant manager, Patrick Sullivan, for the first time, as well as a number of other team members that have joined Copper since my last visit in 2017. Ashcroft was our 2019 Zero Harm President's Award winner, and while their Zero Harm performance hasn't quite matched up since then, they continue to be one of the most innovative facilities we have with many ideas accepted through the innovation platform iShare. I got to experience one firsthand by using the Mobile Equipment Proximity Safety System, an idea submitted by Caleb Collins. The system is a small device that you wear around your neck that vibrates when you come within three to nine meters of an active piece of mobile equipment while also providing an audible alarm to the equipment operator to alert him or her that someone has entered an unsafe zone. What a great tool that has now been adopted by several other sites. I got to have lunch with the entire workforce, spend some additional time with several individuals, and check out a number of improvements that have been made at the site since my last visit. I really enjoyed my visit and thank Pat and the entire Ashcroft team for their hospitality. Later this month, I'll be heading to Susquehanna, Pennsylvania to officially congratulate them on winning the 2021 Zero Harm President's Award. The third thing I'd like you to know is I took my turn in the barrel recently with a positive COVID diagnosis. I was fortunate to not turn it into a potential super spreader as I started to feel the mildest of symptoms as I was traveling to a visit to our Millington, Tennessee and Vance, Alabama plants back in May. I was connecting on a flight through Atlanta to Memphis, had some strangely clogged ears which resulted from the flight to Atlanta and just started to experience a runny nose as the flight to Memphis was taking off. As I arrived to pick up my rental car, I thought I should test for COVID just in case since I would be coming into contact with a number of our people over the next few days. Fortunately, I had a rapid test with me and I tested in the car. Sure enough, it came up positive. I immediately canceled the visit to the plant, began my 14 hour trek back home by car. Over the next few days, as I worked from home, I had some congestion, a runny nose and a mild cough. Now, all the symptoms subsided within five days and I did continue quarantining for several more days out of an abundance of caution. I was fortunate that my symptoms were mild and I recovered quickly, but I know some people don't wanna hear it, but I'm happy that I was vaccinated. Maybe the result would have been the same, but I wouldn't have wanted to test it to find out. This is a virus that's going to be with us for the foreseeable future as rates ebb and flow, so please pay attention to updates and protocol changes from your local leadership teams and get boosted if you're eligible. While it may feel tiresome, we still need to do what we can to protect our people and our other stakeholders, including our customers and suppliers. And my apologies go out to the teams in Millington and Vance who prepared for my visits, 
I promise I'll be looking to reschedule those visits at some point later this year and look forward to seeing you all then. Now onto the fourth thing that I want you to know for this month, which is to remind everyone that the 2022 Wellness Program for U.S.-based employees is set to begin July 1st and run through September 30th of this year. And once again, the program is designed to help you get the basic health information you need to make informed decisions while also providing some opportunities to improve your overall health. This year, the required activities are mostly similar to prior years and will include the following. Taking the online real age test, which is a 15 minute health assessment, getting your biometric screening done, and by doing that, you'll receive a $100 gift card at the time of the test, getting your preventative exam, and finally, providing a tobacco-free certification or enrolling in a provided activity to quit tobacco. Now, there are two key changes to the program this year. First, the tobacco-free certification or commitment to participating in a program designed to help you quit tobacco. You know, tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable disease, disability, and death in the United States. Each year, the U.S. spends more than $225 billion on medical care to treat smoking-related disease in adults. The second change to this year's program is that employees who fully complete this year's program will receive $500, plus they'll receive a $500 discount on their 2023 insurance premium. Beginning next year, we're going to eliminate the $500 cash reward and have the completion of the program apply to reducing the next year's premium. Now, this is an important change and provides an additional benefit to you because the $500 payment that participants currently receive by completing the program is taxed as income while the premium reduction escapes taxation, thereby getting you the full value of your reward. Stay tuned for more information. We encourage you to continue to use the Wellness Channel on the One Coppers app and look for other wellness resources over the next several months. Now for the one thing I want you to think about. I wanna ask everyone watching this to consider undergoing basic life-saving skill training as you never know when you might find yourself thrust into a situation where you're the only person between someone living or dying. A situation like this recently occurred a few weeks ago at our Hubble, Michigan plant when Cody Woodbury, who is a process engineer at the plant, stepped in to save someone who started to choke on food in the lunchroom. Cody had the presence of mind and the training to immediately step in and perform the Heimlich maneuver several times to dislodge the food and save the individual from choking to death. And we're thankful that Cody was able to calmly take control of a scary situation and help a fellow employee who is now thankfully okay. Examples like the one I just described remind us of the importance of learning those basic life-saving skills such as the Heimlich Maneuver, CPR, or even using an AED. In an emergency situation, things escalate quickly and having just a little bit of training can make all the difference in helping us to avoid panic and instead calmly help to save a life, just like Cody. So if you're interested in learning some of these skills but not sure where to begin, check out redcross.org backslash take hyphen a hyphen class to find classes near you. Also be on the lookout for training that Copper sponsors from time to time in our various locations. So hats off to you, Cody, for your heroic actions that not only saved your colleague's life, but through the retelling of your story inspires others to also get trained, which could lead to other life-saving events in the future. A great example of the virtual cycle at work. Finishing up now with two things to look forward to. First, I'll start with the safety idea summit that's being organized to take place in Pittsburgh on July 20th and 21st. This is part of our efforts to take our zero harm culture to the next level. Now, Ashley Coop will be leading the summit with a focus on gathering feedback from our frontline employees at our U.S. wood treating plants. Ashley will take the team through a process of innovative problem solving techniques with the goal of identifying practical incident prevention measures that can be applied across our wood treating network and hopefully lead to a reduction in workplace injuries. It's another component of our zero harm 2.0 efforts that solicits direct impact from the individuals who perform or lead the tasks that go on day in and day out at our facilities. You know, the rollout of Zero Harm that began in 2016 was top down and focused heavily on culture, process, and leadership. The Zero Harm has been instrumental in significantly improving our safety culture and results over the last six years. And we believe that now that we have an established structure in place, solicitation of feedback and ideas from the front line will push us closer to our desired goal of zero injuries and incidents. Idea Summit participants have been nominated from a number of different locations and we're now going through a selection process to identify the most passionate safety-minded individuals to bring to Pittsburgh to work with Ashley. Good luck to all those involved and please accept the opportunity if asked. There may not be an opportunity to have more of an impact than working in this group and you'll get a chance to meet a number of your colleagues from different parts of the country that have similar responsibilities and challenges as yours. Look forward to seeing those selected in Pittsburgh in a month's time. Finishing up now with the second thing to look forward to, 
I'm planning to work with Stephen Lucas and the rest of the Leadership Council on organizing some employee feedback sessions on some different topics of importance. It's been a while since our last one, and now that we've become much more adept at using technology, we don't have much of an excuse for not putting something together that can involve team members from all parts of the world. So stay tuned as I hope to get the first of the sessions communicated and scheduled soon. Look forward to seeing and hearing from you. That's all I have for this month's edition of the 412. Until I see you again in July, I hope everyone remains well and continues to stay safe and stay strong. Bye, everyone.